we are going to start to talk about the class, or about the scientific method. And the scientific method is how science has sort of begun to answer these difficult questions, like how is something alive? Anything we found out in science has used this. So, just to give you a little bit of background, nothing you really need to know, but I think this is fun fact. So, in ancient Greece, they started to ask this question, but they started to ask it in a way not science related, because they didn't have science in ancient Greece. They couldn't ask it in a science way. So, they looked at things around them and just tried to, like, figure out what was going on. And one of the first things one of the ancient philosophers looked at was a piece of cork. Have you ever seen a cork? Yeah. yeah. You see the little holes in the cork? Yeah. He looked at that and he said, oh, those look like cells. You know, like little cavities and something. Mm -hmm. Clearly, all things are made up of tiny, empty spaces called cells. And he went from there. Yes. Is that why they call like jail cells? cells? Yes, that is why jail cells are referred to as cells. Because they are like cavities, openings. So, that's why you, you might talk about a cell being a big opening. So, so occasionally... There's a good way to ask questions and a bad way to ask questions. Some questions are poorly asked. Like, just to get us thinking on this one. In order for science to answer a question, it has to be asked in a certain way. Have you ever talked about scientific questions before? Because I know, I know high schoolers who I worked with over the summer who didn't know this answer. So I'd like to talk about this a little bit with you. A scientific question is a precise question with a very clear answer. So, what makes something alive not really a scientific question? I could say, am, am I alive? Yeah. The answer would be yes or no, right? Well, if you're talking Wait, about how... <laughs> so, when we start to talk about these questions, they get very specific. Scientific questions are very specific, and they're testable. So you need to have a way to see if they are one thing or the other. So some people have tried to scientifically prove if God exists or not. Because you can't test that, science can't tell you. What are you going to prove here? Exactly. So, yes, Face versus opinion. Is it face? Yes, it is. Oh, I corrected face. Uh, I'm going to fix that. So, fact versus opinion, right? If you are asking the question for a face, for a fact. <laughs> fact versus opinion. You're asking a question for a fact. Opinion questions can't be scientific questions. Someone give me an opinion question. Okay. Anyone, what's, what's a question about my opinion? Or about your opinion? Uh, what? What's, ask me uh, an opinion. Oh. It's my favorite ice cream. Do you think God exists? That, yeah, you I think guess. You think yeah, God that's an opinion question. Let's, let's move away from that just because I don't really want to get too bogged down in that because those are no, hard. No, that's an opinion. Yeah, yes, it is. You are completely correct. Yes. Yeah. Can Jedi and Anderson look alike? That's an opinion question. Do I think Jedi and Anderson look alike? And the answer is no, I don't. You're basing on our side because it was well, Jedi and Anderson. Jedi, you look more like Anderson than you, than you look like Tamra. Oh! You do. Yeah, at least you don't call him Tamra. But. That would be bad. Let's. <laughs> What's that? So, you will see a little bit later we're going to do some work on scientific questions, and I'm going to ask you if things are scientific questions. A big deciding factor, if they are just, uh, if they are scientific questions or not, is are they asking for an opinion, 
Are they acting for a fact? Words to look out for that will show you it's an opinion. Best. Favorite. Think. If you see those in the question, they are generally asking for an opinion. Yes, sir. Well, what if it's like, um, let's say, uh, it's a proven fact, like, oh. It's a proven fact what? Like, say, um, somebody's the best, and it actually is because they have the best record or something like that. Well, the question wouldn't be who's the best, it would be who has the best record. You have to be careful. In science, you have to be careful the way you ask questions. Because you can't prove who is the best at something. You can prove who has the best record. You can prove who is the tallest, who has the most wins. Those are all scientific questions. That's like, best, what about saying, the word best, Miss Rossi is the best at being tall. Well, how are you good at being tall? You can't be good at being tall. You are the tallest, or you aren't the tallest, or you are the closest to the side. I feel, I feel bad for Kate because somebody's boy with her grandma, they must have been. I want Kate to be back like, oh, it's not me, you, 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 you. Like, I doubt that Kate. So, three, two. We can talk about grammar and stuff. That's actually a really interesting question. Caveman probably did not speak English. Caveman? Yes. She died and just said he felt bad for cavemen because of their grammar. Cavemen probably did not speak English. The English language is relatively new compared to humans. So we can talk about that later. That's kind of an off-topic thing that I think is pretty difficult to talk about. Yeah. See, that's something people say. It's a fact that this is my opinion. Well, yes, of course. But in science, the facts about your opinion are not really that important. Yes, yeah, uh, we can prove. Yeah, we can. We can. And if we prove that they are cavemen, there's a series of things we will show that prove that cavemen were right. The beautiful thing about science and facts is because you have to be transparent with your process. I think cavemen exist because I found this bone in a cave in Germany. And I use radiocarbon dating to let me know that it was two billion years old. Did two billion years old. I got a question. If you can disprove anything in that chain, you can disprove that fact. That statement no longer becomes true. And that is part of the scientific method. What is the difference between cavemen and Neanderthal? Uh, Neanderthal is a scientific term. Cavemen is a general concept people have of humans, humanoids who live in caves. So not humans, not like us, but people similar to us. Humanoids are a whole branch. We're getting way too caught up in really good questions, but we're not going to get to my activity, and I love my activity today. So. Can I ask you, is the thing before or The thing before was asking good questions. This is the scientific method. And these are the steps of the scientific method. In that song we had, they kind of talked about it. First thing you do is you make an observation. You look at something. And based on that observation, you have a question. Every scientific discovery that's happened that has yielded iPhones, medicine, electricity, started with someone looking at something and saying, hey, what about that? What are those? <laughs> hey, what are those? How do I make that work for me? <laughs> Once you have your question, the work begins. You have to form a hypothesis. Your hypothesis, your hypothesis is in a very specific arrangement. We are going to talk about that next slide. Then, using your hypothesis, you kind of have to design an experiment. The experiment you design has to have a text testable prediction. You really have to control things. We will talk about experimental design later because I want us to do an experiment that we design. Following that, you gather data from the experiment. So you do your experiment, you get your data. You use that data to go back and you look at your prediction. If your data supports your prediction, you're good. If your data doesn't support your prediction, you have to rethink your prediction and your reasoning. And 
maybe change your prediction and your reason. Last but not least, you use that experiment and that data to define a theory. Define a theory. Theories are tested hypotheses. They are things about the world that we have evidence to suggest are true and not false. Right? So we have this theory of evolution. We have this theory of electricity. We have theories about buoyancy. Anything we see happening in the world, we kind of have a theory about. Gravity, we have a theory about gravity. We don't, we don't know the gravity. No, but we have a theory. We have lots and lots of experiments, lots and lots of observed uh, occurrences, and we are constantly informing our theories. Because believe it or not, we find out things that we thought were true or wrong all the time. Because of this. Because we gather data, we do more experiments, we go back and we rethink it, we gain a better understanding. So... <laughs> so, I, it's something I told you. So, hypotheses. Every hypothesis is in the form if, then, because. If you study on your test, then you will receive a passing grade because you will be prepared for the test. That's not a very good hypothesis because because you will be prepared for the test is not very testable, right? Being prepared for something isn't testable. I can say, because you will know the information I gave you, that would be a better hypothesis. But the format is always if, then, because. Your hypotheses can be wrong. It's completely acceptable for your hypotheses to be wrong. It's part of science. However, if they're wrong, when you form your own, they need to be wrong in an educated way. You can't say, if I study for the test, then purple because elephants. Right? Correct. You haven't tried. Elephant part, then purple. You haven't attempted. So your 